Hi and welcome to Teddy Fisher TV. Today you join me at the glorious Norfolk Broads and you can see a very very interesting body of water. It's going to be very very different from anything that we've covered in the past and the purpose of the video really is to give you a few ideas if you're going to be booking up for next year or you're hoping to get away for a sneaky little break with the family towards the end of this year what can you take with you. Now if you have a little look at my setup and we'll look at that in more depth in a second how have I managed to sneak all this in the car along with the buckets and spades along with the sun loungers and all the rest of it well it's pretty pretty simple stuff and I'll go through it in a little bit more detail shortly but let's have a little look at this venue it's very very interesting where I am today is typical of many many swims that you're going to find here on the broads there are thousands of these inlets or boat channels that come off of the main broads now the main broad beyond the rush line just there is called Hickling Broad and it's the largest of them all. I've had a couple of little dabbles um, as I've been here uh, over the past week and this body of water is full of small fish. Rudd, roach, perch, occasionally a bonus skimmer bream and it's great just to get away for an hour or two. In fact if the family's still in bed like mine are now it's perfect to come out of an early morning or of an evening after you've had your your day out to whatever attraction that you've you've chosen to visit. So let's have a little look at the tackle in a bit more depth. I'm going to zoom in and get a little bit closer just so you can show you how I got all this in the car along with the old parasols and beach balls. So let's take a look. So taking a look at the tackle a little bit closer, we've got the simple two meter landing net handle with a head, a little keep net, so that landing net and keep net went in a plastic bag, a little towel, one of these brilliant bags that I take with me when I go barbel fishing, it's a Corum transition rucksack, and I can fit loads of bits and pieces in there as demonstrated by all the stuff hanging out. The seat is a matrix seat and it's, I found it really, really useful because it folds up and that just goes nice and flat in the back of the car. Now here's a little tip for you that I've got. Rather than bringing bait trays etc, I picked up one of these little bivy tables which have proved pretty invaluable. I think it was a tenner. It's got extendable legs, it holds two bait boxes and a couple of bits and is ideal for this type of fishing. Really useful ground bait bucket. I wax a few bags of ground bait just sat at the bottom in there and this is again it's from Corum and this has got a, a little riddle that goes in there and I'm about to riddle that off. The mix today is Teddy Fisher uh, red roach and some red crumb to bulk it out and I'll put that through the riddle shortly. Now then down to the business end a little whip you can see the color pink one there it's a four meter whip that I bought for my little girl and that fat packs down it's a fladen fishing uh, what's it called festival travel um, it's four meters but it packs down to there so 50 centimeters so that can just go in the suitcase 13 foot match rod with a closed face reel um, it's my leader GT I really like that rod cheap and cheerful but very effective and Again, that can go into a single rod sleeve, along with the landing at handle um, and along with any bank sticks. I've got a really basic bank stick there that uh, I snuck in as well. And that is pretty much it. That all packed down, went into the boot, took up very, very little room and uh, no issues with the family. Uh, incidentally, why I chose a closed face reel is because of the amount of rivers around here. And if I did get an opportunity to sneak off and fish a river, then um, the closed face reel will come in handy. So that's the setup. I'll talk you a little bit more depth about the rigs, etc. shortly. Okay, now we've had a little look at the gear that I've brought with me. Let's look at the terminal tackle. Um, 
it's pretty much as simple as we can get really it, almost pole fishing tactics but on a rod and line whereas i've chose this uh one one and a quarter gram drenin busy wag with a very fine insert to spot delicate bites and that's locked in place with a number four and a bb coming down to just above the hook length three number eights so a little spread bulk and then i've got a 12 inch hook length which is um 0.14 so about sort of three and a half pound in old money with a number eight shot sort of six inches from the hook and a size 14 drennan cart maggot which sounds a little bit over gunned but i have had one or two sessions on here already hence why i know there's lots of roach rudd bits and pieces and these fish are not shy let's not forget that it's highly likely they've never seen a hook before um, and what i'm doing is i'm fishing in the deepest water right down the middle pretty much off the rod end and actually the um, close face reel really helps me to sort of backwind and give myself that extra bit of line when I'm swinging fish in. The whip, a shorter whip, something like a two and a half metre whip to hand would be very, very effective, but I didn't bring um, a shorter whip, just this little girl's whip uh, that my daughter uses. So we can pop on a single caster. I bought these down the the local shop you'll find lots of tackle shops around this area i put three balls of that ground bait mix in of, of the teddy fisher red roach with the red crumb um, laced with casters and all we're going to do we're just going to slightly down to my right and just they're taking it on the drop that's the fish straight away which is why i've got my bulk shot um, just above my hook length to try and get it through and that is typical stamp of the fish in this broad channel and this is what you're going to find all over these this area hopefully the casters will single out the better fish and if it does get really silly where lots of small fish I'm going to try a double caster now actually lots of small fish are becoming a nuisance then that's when the whip will come out because it's a little bit more crude. I've got a one gram float on there. So see, that's straight on it, on the drop. Now, again, like I say, if this becomes a bit of a problem and we want some of the better fish on the bottom, well, these are a decent stamp. Then we'll, we'll fish the whip. The really greedy fish as well. It's gone, you know, straight down its throat. And this is why fishing to hand essentially is going to be a lot quicker. If it's fishing a short line on a maybe a top kit or something like that, double caster again, then um, it really would be a little bit slower. Same again, just try and get it over that. That's where I've threaded my balls of ground bait. Let's see if I can get it to the bottom. I know that there's better skimmers on the bottom here. So bait wise, I mentioned I've got a pint of casters from the local shop, I've got half a pint of red maggots, I've got a couple of worms that I brought with me out of the garden, and these bites are straight away, there we go. Um, I'm trying to single out those better fish, but as I say, it's great fun, great sport. Okay, so you can see that those fish are intercepting the bait on the drop. So I'm just going to try a piece of worm tipped with a caster just to see if we can get it to the bottom and wait for a better stamp of fish. But that's being held up again. And there we go, another rod. No better because it didn't get to the bottom. But as you can see, it's superb sport. And I think what we'll do is we'll continue fishing the way we are for a little while. And then to really build a way, I think we can go on the whip and fish that to hand. it's now on the bottom see if it brings anything better see that's a roach so we can see those roach are definitely on the bottom and it's the rod that sit above them again a lovely stamp
another ball of ground bait double caster again let's see if we can get that bait down to the bottom there we go Time for a little change of tactics. Now, I make no apologies because this is rather crude, but this little girl's whip, as I mentioned, this flayed and thing, it's not the greatest, very floppy. Four meters, bit too long for here, to be honest. But um, it serves a purpose. Uh, ideally, you know, if you, your little ones are gonna have a bit of a fish, um, you don't wanna be using all your best gear, so this is why I brought this. Now. It's a one gram float that I would normally use for fishing on a river. Um, big, thick, visible top for when you're trotting down. This is three pound Maxima line, very robust. Coming down, I had no Olivettes, so it's three BBs as, a, as droppers and two number eight on the 12 inch hook length with a size 14 red maggot again these are micro barbed hooks so the idea is that we're going to try and bomb it through the surface layers to avoid those tiny tiny rod and hopefully pick a few fish up that are sat sort of in the last 12 inches that hopefully are a slightly better stamp as I say the wagglers works okay um, especially if I look a bonus fish but I think this will be quicker and what we're doing because we've got such a long line and this whip isn't ideal we're just holding the line tight to the float so that you can see the tip's very high but that enables me to strike on little dinks just like that if i had loads of line flopping about um you know we're going to be a little bit slow so keep the line tight there's a little touch This feels a better fish. Yes, that's a nice roach. And that was on double caster. So, first chuck on the whip, and already, and the crude whip, much, much better stamp roach. That's beautiful. We'll pop him in the net, try that one again. So, we're fishing directly over the ground bait. We're trying to bomb the bait through. So, I could could sort of do the same on the waggler if I adjusted my locking shot and put some more shot down the line but this should serve its purpose <laughs> it's uh, it's not the best piece of kit and as I say I make no apologies for the rig being rather crude but remember these fish have never seen a hook bait before they're not bothered about maxima low diameters 14 12 hook whatever um, you know I'm convinced that this is the the best tactic I don't want to be fishing 18s, fine wire and fluorocarbon and all the rest of it. We just don't need it. I'm sure in winter you'd still get good sport and you'd have to fine everything down, but today, not necessary. There's a little bit of tow coming in off of the broad, which is quite interesting. It's, I've not seen it move at all. It might be the surface, but it might also be the bottom as well. I've regularly topping up with those little balls of conker sized balls of this red roach and red ground bait. There's a little bite. Well, these are definitely a better stamp. What's this? It's a skimmer. Brilliant. First one of the session. So, this is working perfect. Just felt. Waggler was all good and well for the bonus fish. There we go. Um, but for pinpoint accuracy, and to bomb it through, those uh, tiny, tiny, some of the rod I was getting were, you know, they looked like they'd just been born. <laughs> so, no good. Double caster again. 
and a little line back. So there's another. What's this? Again, definitely a better stand. We can swing that one in. Roach. So we, it's working well. So we're bombing through past the rud, directly over that red ground bait. And these are a better stamp, and they're not just rud. Let's need a little bit of ground bait. Couple of casters. Keep my line tight. We'll catch one more and then see how the session progresses a little bit further. I might stick on the whip, I might go back on the waggler, depends if I hook any more bonus fish. But we're only fishing for a couple of hours. We've got a boat trip planned today, so and keep the family happy, but that's the beauty of these little waters. Minimal gear, rucksack, a couple of bits and pieces. Don't have to fish light. Just keep that line tight. Interesting, it's towing a little bit to the left now. And so we've got a bit of surface skim and a very slight undertow. I'll put a maggot on. Let's just see what happens. I'll put double maggot on and I, I can second guess that it'll be attacked straight away regardless of whether it's bombing through or not. Let's see. Well, it's got to the bottom. Not for long. Bump, 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 bump. Lift by it. Yeah, tiny. And there's the difference, look. Tiny little rud. So it just goes to show you the difference between a caster and a maggot. I'll do it again. Double caster this time. And I very much doubt we'll be catching a little fish like that. Straight over that ground bait. Lift bite, travelling, fish on. Look at the difference in the stamp. There we go. So, hopefully, that's demonstrated a little bit the difference between the whip with the bulk down rig and fishing that waggler, which was a little bit more. You know, we only had three number eights down the line on the waggler. Um, and don't necessarily need such a fine tip on the waggler as well. There's more to read the lift bites. It's working just as well here on the whip. That's been taken straight away. That's crazy. That's not even got through. What's oh, a bit big to swing? Oh, ambitious. But you can see how we can put a net together. That's a lovely rod. You can see how we put a net together of these silvers. Pretty sharpish. So, I'll carry on, see if we can hit our target of double figures in a couple of hours. I need to put my foot down a little bit, but I'm also still intrigued about what that bonus fish was that I lost. So I might waste a bit more time sitting and waiting, so I might not hit my target, we'll see. Right then, final trick of the day. I mentioned earlier on that I might do with the waggler is I've taken the, one of the BBs off. What that's done, I've put a number six on, locking the float. What that's done is given me a little bit to play with. So I've now got a bulk of four number eights above the hook length and two number eights on the hook length. And that means I can get this down just that little bit quicker and hopefully avoid those tiny rod and fish in that last sort of 12 inches that I was speaking about before. There we go. Nice roach. That was just on a double caster. I mean, they really are a lovely stamp. These fish have never ever seen a hook bait before at all. Um, what I could do as well, of course, I can just pop a piece of worm on and weight it out a little bit. I've kept those little balls of red ground bait going in, as I've said. Um, when I have fed the casters, I've 
cut a good handful in. So avoid the little and often and I've just put in sort of 30 rather than five or six on a regular basis um, to try and get some bait down to the bottom. There we go. And we've just kept putting fish in the net. It's been really good fun. It's uh, The stamp's been decent. Um, I think the caster makes a big difference compared to the maggot, which we demonstrated before. The whip, it's, it works to a degree. Um, it's a little bit, <laughs> a little bit saggy, but I think you can see I've had one or two fish on it. So I think we've demonstrated that we can come away to a UK destination, i.e. the Norfolk Broads, fish one of these little side cut-off channels, little bolt channels, with some rudimentary gear, although it looks like I've got quite a bit, it was all packed away nice and tidy, and put a reasonable net of fish together in a short space of time. Um, you know, maximum I'm going to be fishing this morning it's going to be sort of three hours, take away the filming, so it's probably going to be about two, two and a half hours max. And it's just, you know, lovely um, that you can mix it up a little bit, get some hours in fishing, spend time with the family, relax. Oh, what happened there? Something seems to hit me float. Um, yeah, now I guess final tip before we do, we, we do a little catch shot. What do we do about the bait? So I've got a pint of casters here, I've probably used, I don't know, a quarter of a pint, if that. Um, if you can put it in the fridge, of course, in the accommodation that you're staying in, then brilliant. If not, then what I'll do is I'll drain that water off, and I'll put some fresh water in, and I'll leave that um, on the terrace. There's a little lift bite. I'll leave that on the terrace. Um, if you can put stuff in the fridge, they'll say perfect. Maggots, the same, I'll put them on the terrace, try and keep them out of the sun. Ground bait, I'll zip that up and that should be fine as well. If not, what you can do with ground bait is you can freeze it. So you could put it in, say, an old bread bag or a couple of sandwich bags, pop them in the freezer um, and then defrost before you need it. The worms, you've just got to try and keep them moist and um, out of the sun as well so you should get a couple of days fishing out oh, a couple of days fishing out of whatever bait you get or bring with you of course another quick win is to bring dead maggots so if you've got some maggots in your freezer at home bring those down whack them in the freezer in your accommodation just take them out as and when you need them that's sitting a bit high intercepted on the way down so there we go two real simple tactics little girls whip floppy as it can be but serves a purpose simple 13 foot waggler rod um, with a very fine float almost like a pole float and uh, some little bits and pieces so hopefully you've enjoyed it hopefully you've got a few tips and uh, I'll carry on fishing and then get a catch shot well there you go, there's the fruits of our labour. Couple of hours here on this lovely cut off channel here off of Icklin Broad. Um, not quite the double figures I was looking for, but I was chasing big fish for quite some time. It's about six or seven pound of rudd, roach, with a nice skimmer and a couple of little perch in there as well. So next time you get yourselves on holiday, a little bit of ground bait, a little bit of bait and some rudimentary tackle, and you can enjoy a lovely couple of hours just like this. I'm off to go on a boat trip, so cheers for watching. <laughs>